Howdy do, dear friends. It's Cow Children O'Clock. Have you ever almost got married? I know most of you will be shouting no into your radios, but statistics tell me a few will be nodding with a slight frown, as if to say, yes, and I hope the episode proves relatable to my experiences and not a, a silly mockery of real-life human crisis. Well, yes, I hope so too. Nonetheless, welcome, welcome to cow children. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children. Cow girls, cow boys, any non-binary. Cow gals, cow pals, hoping no brigands will kill them. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. All cow children, every afflicted pilgrim. Countless millions, any demography. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of cow children, cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. Today's cow children are the jilts. You as well? Me as well, who as well? As well as me. As well as you what? You got the white dress, the sour puffy eyes, the hungry belly of a jilted woman. Join the club. Cigarette? I know there's probably not an actual club for jilted brides, but I would join one. Just at the mo, I could use support. Reckon we got our dresses from the same shop. So, man, was it? Didn't show? He was a lad. Do they count? And he didn't even do me the dignity of not showing. We got as far as the going, going, gone, and he vamoosed. He was the gone one. Reckon he's coming back, maybe? Wouldn't bet on it. Cup of coffee or something? The name's Karen. Karen Matheson Michaels. Thought I might end up triple barrelling it, but my Saturday did not go as I'd expected. Who... Who jilted you? Some guy. Pity, really. I can live with or without, but now I feel offended. I haven't been in the mood to marry since I done widowed myself, but I was well up for it this time. Look, I'm tired. Could we carry this on on horseback? Horse noises. Horse ridery always poops me out. Not me. I think I'm just sort of an animal person. Sit me on a horse or a zebra or a big ostrich and I'd light right up like an orb. The others all reckoned I had vampiric legs. Who were these others? You don't seem to have a lot of, uh, mourners ain't the word. Sympathors. My sisters from the convent. They couldn't come because Saturday is soup day. It's the Saturday soup system. Can I bum another cigarette? Hmm, smoke much? It's a special day. Got a name, jilting sister? Oh, Sister Daisy. Daisy Richter. Were you going to keep the surname? It's a strong one. I hadn't considered it. Looking back, I don't think I'd considered a lot of things. Probably worked out for the best, then. Did you love the almost groom? I didn't really know yet. I had a pash from afar. I knew him by smell, so I always knew where he'd been. Perhaps we were fated to fall apart if we ever met. As you did at the altar. We parted at the altar. We met about 55 metres west of it. Well, you know what they say about going east? It's bright and shiny in the mornings. That it is. If the sun rose in the west but set in the east, do you suppose it'd make a difference to wind direction? All else being the same? Mm, Let me sleep on it. Are we riding these horses in any especial direction? Yes. Do you mind? I don't know. See, me and my jilter man had our honeymoon all planned out. Pity. I don't like to see myself as pitiable. Fair. But since the wedding's off, and since the rooms are booked, and since there's a brewery in Lemley Corn... Oh, Lemley Corn! Heard of it, have you? No, but it has a romantic sound. It's a nature spot, and apparently a rubbish dump. A big tip full of trash. But as I was saying, there is a brewery. I could go for a pint. Well, that was my thinking. We can drown our sorrows. And if that doesn't work, we can jump off the corn cliffs and sink in the mass of garbage that apparently lives there and resign ourselves to the dustbin of the West. I like the first part of this plan. Then let's just keep going and keep going and constantly refreshing our frame of reference and sooner or later we'll arrive immediately. I am the innkeeper, loud and clear. Would you like a beer? Let's kip here for the night. And will there be a bedtime story? We always have one at the convent. Are you offering or soliciting? Because here's a fact for you, Daisy. Solidarity and all that, but I'm not your mum. I was offering, actually. But if you'd rather not... No, please. I'm too tired to read, but I'll take a tale. There was once a farmer who worked hard, was blessed by fortunate coincidence and harvested a large crop of 3,000 rhubarbs. Ah, the three magical rhubarbs. You've heard it already. I enjoy it, Daisy. Press on. There was once a farmer who worked hard... The story she told was this. There was once a farmer who worked hard and was blessed by fortunate coincidence and harvested a large crop of 3,000 rhubarbs. 
the farmer felt at once that the rhubarbs were blessed with a discreet quantity of blessing and power which would never diminish while they were in the presence of their proper owner. Happy with his blessed vegetables, he carried the rhubarbs to the barn and slept. During the night, a burglar broke into the barn and stole 2,000 of the rhubarbs. The following day, the farmer was very upset to have lost so many rhubarbs, but was happy that the discreet quantity of blessing now covered a smaller number of rhubarbs, meaning each rhubarb had thrice as much blessing as it previously possessed. The farmer decided to lock his 1,000 rhubarbs in a bank vault where burglary could not affect them. However, on the road to the bank, his wares were pilfered by a pickpocket who stole 900 of the remaining rhubarbs. When he realised what had happened, the farmer was again dismayed, but reflected that the blessing was now apportioned to a mere 100 rhubarbs, making each one 10 times more powerful than had hitherto been the case, at least while it remained in the possession of its proper owner. Exhausted by the mathematics of the case, the farmer slept again, this time in a reputable hotel. However, during the night his stock of sticks was ravaged by a robber who incapacitated the sleeping farmer and made off with 90 rhubarbs. The farmer, aghast, made at once for the bank with his ten residual rhubarbs. At the very doorway to the bank, he was affronted by an attempted murderer. The murder was unsuccessful, but destroyed seven of the ten remaining rhubarbs. Now, thought the farmer, I have no need to stow the three extant portions of my crop in the bank, because their power protects me, even against death. While these three rhubarbs remain in the possession of their proper owner, I shall be mighty in power, and who could divest me of them? By the winnowing away of their fellows, each stork's powers had increased a thousandfold. Each of the rhubarbs had its own character and power. The green rhubarb, which granted long life to the farmer. The pink rhubarb, which assured him of close friendships. And the purple rhubarb, which protected the farmer's possessions from theft and entropy. The farmer grew comfortable and successful by the blessing of his three magical rhubarbs. He grew to a great age, but eventually decided that his years, though long and happy, must come to an end to preserve the natural order. His first duty was to give away his three magic rhubarbs. Alas, the farmer had four children, among whom there was no favourite or natural successor. The farmer did not want his children to dispute with one another over their shares of the magical inheritance, nor did he mean to bless any one of them more highly than the others. Reasoning that they would inherit his lands, possessions, and considerable fortunes, the farmer chose to give his rhubarbs and all legal rights to their great powers to the attempted murderer whose accidental destruction of seven rhubarbs had catalyzed the conditions for the farmer's perfect prosperity. The farmer went to join his ancestors in the place where rhubarb has no value, so great is its ubiquity. With all assurance of peace, hope, and comfort, the attempted murderer lived happily in jail for the rest of his days. This story is traditionally followed by a disclaimer on the topic of prison reform. Good morning, Karen. No. On consideration, the winds would be completely different. Not the same, and not just the same course in reverse. Eh? What? Wind flow in a world with the sun going counter-sunwise. Waves of heat. Mountains. It'd reshape the wind, and in turn the wind would reshape the land. Any ideas for breakfast? I'm on top of things this morning. Behold, porridge pie. Oh my good heck. Slow release of energy, am I right? We're halfway to Lemley Corn. Carriage up. Taxi noises. Toot toot. Your dress is very particular. Thanks. It's what we wear in the convent. To be quite honest, it was the main reason I made my vows. I would have worn it for the wedding too, but apparently that's not right. But it should be. If you have a favourite outfit that's your favourite outfit, you should wear it to get married in. See, I should have known this wasn't going to work out. I should have, should have known. Why do you like it so much? Well, it's brown and simple. Clean lines, apparently, are a thing, apparently. And because it's a uniform, it's really uniform. Good in summer and winter, and the wimple, it keeps my ears warm. So you went into the convent to get a dress? And to be a nun... Can't wear a wimple if you're not under holy orders, Karen. And you were going to get married so you could get out again and keep the dress? It's not that simple, but yes. I wanted to do science experiments and learn, but eventually I'd read all their books, even the ones with no experiments at all. I've got a fairly broad conception of what's science and what's an experiment, though, so most books satisfy. But you're right, marriage was one way out. Plus, they offered me a hundred smackaroos. Who did? Oh, some guy said, have a wedding ceremony with your groom. Boom! A hundred smackaroos. Smackaroos. 
from that point, the wedding was a bonus. A bogus bonus? But I got what I was offered. Well, that's good. What's a smackaroo? Currency. Sounds like a wedding where no one got married was pretty much best for everyone, then. Would have been nice to have fair warning. I was all excited and everything. How about yours? A messy non-event. It wouldn't have been my first, wedding-wise. First time around, I had a quiet, wet wedding and a so-so marriage. Short-lived because I embraced my husband too vociferously, and he withered away into a sort of stick of licorice, which I think everyone agreed was technically death. And then he got thrown in the trash by accident by someone who accidentally counted him as a real stick of licorice. Oh... I hope the rhubarb story didn't remind you too much of that. No, it's okay. We weren't that close. He had a winning personality, but he rarely turned me on. This might be too much information. When I learned he was a sort of alien stick insect, I just sort of sighed. An alien? It would explain a few things. Anyway, we weren't really in love, but he was a handsome elevator inspector. I could never help feeling we had unfinished business. I hoped a second wedding would plump me up a bit. You know, like a cushion that just needs to be comfy again. But that didn't happen, did it? Jilted in the proverbial ass. And I reckon it's because the new fella, my no-show Romeo, realised I was a widow, and thus not virginal. And he was, so as the best I can reckon, particular about such things. I'm offended on your behalf. We're both offended on each other's behalf, and that's the solidarity of the jilted. Here you both are. That'll be £27.50p. Could you be a dear and give the taxi her money, Daisy? You are replete with smackaroos. Sometimes you talk like my gran. I'm a widow. It's just about the only perk. I looked in your wallet, and you're only about a year older than I would have been if I was born the same day as I was conceived. Here you go. Thanks, miss. Taxi noises. That taxi driver will be red as a big beetroot when she gets home and realises the journey was already prepaid, and by taking your money, she's ripped you off by accident with no way to pay it back. It's the way I like to overpay folks. Rumple their heart a bit. Let them come to terms with accidental gain. Please don't spend all my smackaroos on things you've already bought. I solemnly swear. Now, what's that very, 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 very exceedingly tall building? And where's the brewery? And where, importantly, is the rubbish dump? I don't know any of these things. Can I guess? I won't stop you. I think they all have the same answer. I thought you said this place was a beauty spot. It was. Let's see that thing. How do you mean your first husband was an alien? As in, a foreigner? No, as in alien bodies. Like uh, when you have a grain silo and it turns out there are live mackerels swimming around in it. Tell me truly. Is that a common occurrence? Mackerel are all muscle. You find baby little mackerels in your grain-based porridge, you need to go and complain to the miller. I'm serious. If you swallowed one, it could get into your bloodstream. Surely you jest. I jest a lot, but not about mackerel. They're the most fractal beings on God's yellow west. But my erstwhile husband, who, being hugged vociferously, reverted, as I've said, into licorice form and was tossed out, I suspect by my good-for-nothing sister Jill, had had such high hopes living in the peopled cities of the east of the western continent and had yearned forever and for always to be a full-fledged architect. And sometimes I think his reversion to nothing but a licorice had less to do with my tipsy enthusiasms and more to do with his dismay at never rising above safety inspection. Of elevators? Yes, grain elevators, people elevators, and something called an escalator. Powerful. Uh, excuse me? Why, miss? What have you done? Travelled many miles and arguably once killed. Is that so? Arguably. Howdy, the name's Daisy and this is my good buddy Karen. Is this the brewery? Well, what do you think? I don't know. It looks awful tall for a brewery. Awful tall for anything. Awful's right. The thing's in a front, and it only gets taller. Lot of us around waiting for it to fall, and I'm telling you it will. How many floors are there? I have fog of war, so I can't see much more than 45 metres. Well, it starts here, and it just goes up. Funny thing is, they only built three floors of it, enough to brew up beer, ale, a little lager, maybe some barrels of hardened booze. But once it reached what you'd call a critical mass, it just kept getting taller and higher. Some sort of magic science. Everyone's got a theory. Doesn't matter to me, though. I'm here to bring it down and salvage what's left behind. Karen, do you believe in the firmament? Well, I do, that's for sure. I've never had to make up my mind, but I see your thinking. Because it's always, always bothered me. If the West is truly infinite... Which we know it is. Are you going to stand here all day interrupting our conversation, Mr... Bluejack. Bluejack Remlins. 
No, no, I don't shake hands. I wasn't offering you a hand to shake. No, but I like to be up front. You may have arguably killed, but I've a body count they teach kids at school. Not that I kill young'uns. I'm just that famous for it. It's not murder, though. It's revenge. Yes, yes, all right. I'm trying to be excited about the firmament. How can there be a dome of sky that encompasses something infinite as the West? Well, that's obvious, ain't it? We really weren't inviting you into this conversation, Blue Jack. You walked right up to me and said excuse me and then carried on talking. Yes, yes, we did. Daisy, perhaps we should go inside and investigate. Well, watch it. Because the brewery tower is full to the guts and armed with brigands, roaming western marauders, gunfighters, gunshooters, shootists, assassins, gold prospectors, beer prospectors, railroad prospectors, criminal gangs, armed militants, vigilantes, militiamen and geese. See? I've got you interested now. I'm quite capable, you know. You'll find I am fiercely well-read. Oh, OK. Well... Don't say I didn't warn you. Come on, Karen. Did you believe all that? It is a very tall brewery, but I'd rather see for myself. Oh, and look, an elevator. If it's in good working order, I should be able to take us wherever we want to go. Perhaps best to do a little scouting on foot first. Have you ever been shot? Only while heavily armoured. I was in security back east, but I gave that up long ago. Still, life would be less with nothing to disavow. It doesn't smell much like a brewery. More like a sort of horse's paddock. Hmm, not very hoppy. Like a very sad rabbit. I'm going to try these stairs. Seems solid enough. And I have an old trick for peeking around corners with a mirror. Look, Daisy, this could save your life. Oh, holy heck. Well, that's a no-no. Hi, hello, Blue Jack. I told you, you're best off standing safe out here when it all comes crashing down. Where did that bicycle come from? I commandeered it. Tower's going to fall with a mighty crump. I'm going to need to head swiftly in the direction it isn't collapsing, but it's so tall it's going to snap in multiple places while it topples. So I've got to be fast and agile. But look at these butcher's arms. Look at these lumberjack legs. This ghost picker's torso. When it comes to speed and motor control, I'm a biker, not a runner. Why not just start far away? If all you're saying is true, being this close to it puts you in a predicament. That's because I'm the one going to bring the whole thing down. Whack, whack, kablooey, everybody dies. Why bother? It's only a brewery. Oh... That's how it always starts. Just a brewery. Real ale, homemade, local community flavour. And before you know it, it's a behemoth. A juggernaut. Someone on the top floor is making millions and we've just got to lap it up. Well, I don't stand for that. Big buildings are the first sign. That and the goose that lays the golden eggs. Is anyone in charge around here? It's chaos in there. See, there were these two gangs, two brigand bands, bloody violent lots. One led by a rancher called Ranger, and one by a stranger called Rancher, and both gangs descended on the brewery simultaneously once they heard about the gold. The two bosses fought with tongues and words and eventually with fists, but Ranger punched Rancher right out of the front door without realising the ground floor was no longer ground level and turned and fell with him. They both broke their necks, and when the best and only surgeon in town had done her best to rebuild the broken body, she made a mistake anybody could have made and switched the heads of the two, meaning their identities were smooshed and commingled in a way more intimate than most of us will ever know. They were, by the way, dead. But the brewery tower is still full of their brigands, aimless, violent, fighting among themselves, and every man-jack, woman-jill, and person-pee-pee of them trying to bubble up in the shape of the new leader. So the ground floor actually moves up? That's right. The whole thing's growing upwards. Look, see, that front door ain't the one you just came out of. When trees grow, do the tops get taller, or do their bottoms get taller? Neither, I think. The bottoms get wider because new trees grow around the outside of the old tree. I don't think that's what's happening here. Some say the first lot to ride in tied up their horses out front, not knowing the building, in growing big and tall and high, would stretch those poor critters' heads and necks something extraordinary. And some say 
that rather than hanging like any common victim of their state, their necks grew so much longer and longer, and when at last they broke three, boom, giraffes! Some say that's where giraffes come from. This brewery's only a few years old. Giraffes have to predate it by centuries. Well, I didn't say everyone says that. It's still very much a minority opinion. But who knows? Who really knows? This could have happened before. I'm sure they have a common ancestor, but I don't want to argue about it. Anyway, we came out here to ask if there was anyone in authority over the brewery. Maybe a brewer or an architect. Architects? That's one thing I hate in the West. You can never just spit on ground, getting to be the only place I can spit is in the faces of men like Richardson. Bloody edifice. And Richardson is the architect. All right, what floor? Last I checked, he was on floor three out of nine floors. What will that number be in the elevator? I mean, relative to how many floors there are now. You'll find him on floor Y minus nine plus three, which should be the same as Y minus six, depending on if the new floors all come at the bottom. But really, who can say? At last, a straight answer. We won't be long. Try not to cut the building down while we're inside. This isn't the room we were just in. No, still pretty first floorish. Does that mean every floor under the top three or nine or so is a ground floor, or do floors change as they move upwards? That wouldn't make sense. Maybe it goes in sets of floors, so you always get a ground, and a middle, and a top. How many floors does a typical brewery have? I've been in about five of them and never counted. They all have good solid floors, though. We're looking at a well-constructed building of finite but incredible height, and astonishing weight. Doors open it. This ought to give us some clues. Come on in. You don't want to try the stairs again. Whoever shot at you will be floors and floors up by now. This'll be much quicker. I've never used an elevator before. This one looks clean and safe, and recently serviced. Come on, they're perfectly safe. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Daisy. Come on, Daisy, come on. Doors close. Doors open. Come on, I can show you some of the secret codes. Secret elevator codes. You're sure I won't perish? Not of elevators. Come on. Okay, then. Doors closing. The mirror's on the wall, so the whole space looks bigger. The carpet's a bit threadbare. They probably use this for moving big beers around. Great big kegs. I don't like the hum. It's like a machine. I wasn't sure what floor to aim for, so I went with 55. 55?! But what if there aren't that many floors? If it's all been set up right, it'll just go to floor five twice. What are these secret codes then? Oh, top secret. You can fiddle with the trajectory, the velocity, saturation, phase modulation, all sorts. There's even a few emergency ones that they who elevate the elevators swear don't exist. But I've made something of a study of it. Well, don't tell Thingamy down there. I think he'd use a self-destruct. It's actually called self-destroy. I'm not sure what the difference would be. Doors opening. It's dark here. Oh, good. I thought my fog of war was flaring up. When the first elevators were invented, people feared passengers would outpace their eyes, their stomachs, and even the concept of love. And that if you travelled faster than your soul, you would lose all your friendships, as if they were a bag of chips shaken out over a cliff edge to pigeons and penguins. It's a bit hoppier. Seagulls. Shh. Someone's there, I think. I thought I caught a glint of metal. I don't see anyone. There's a silhouette. It might just be a slouching swan, or a large-sized duck. Get, get back in the elevator. Could this be the one that laid the Doors golden... Doors closing. Stay. Doors closing. Stay for the goose. Stay for Goosinda. What was all that about? I have fought with geese before. Is this going to be a discrimination thing? There are good and bad geese, and most of them are immoral, like sharks. No morality, heart empty, except for ventricles, aorta and blood. But there exists a goose. I only hear rumours. Which floor are we going to? 75. Just enough to consider and regroup. Doors opening. This is a bit better. Actually got some windows. I wonder if 55 thought it was a basement. Just need a breather. Don't open the window, though. If we're anywhere near the firmament, the pressure differential could rip your shoes off, and that's putting it mildly. We're still way below it. But look at that horizon. Yellow and blue, a winning combo. Doors closing. Oh, no, don't quick. Jam it with a chair. Doors What's opening. What's going on? Someone else has summoned the elevator. No prizes for guessing who. Your husband, who you hugged vociferously and he turned into a licker. No, the goose. The geese don't understand architecture. There exists a goose with a golden beak. Blue Jack did mention gold prospectors. And look at this. I thought the sun was catching the dust funny, but some of these bits and pieces... 
gold. Doors closing. Doors opening. What are we going to do? Stairs up or stairs down? This is where the codes come in handy. Just come in here. There's a way to get directly from the current floor to floor one without technically going via any other floor. So we could skip the goose's request on 55 and take us from 75 to 1. Wait, is 1 the ground floor or is there a floor called ground beneath the first? Floor 2 is the first floor, but we've been in here about 8 minutes, so neither 1 nor ground is the floor at ground level. We'll be wanting a ground-looking floor to come out where the real ground is in Lemley Corn. That or the elevator numbers constantly adjust. What are we going to try? Mm, Zero. The only honest number. But first, the code. This should work on any and all elevators. Let's see. 200-1111-1159-1341. And zero. Doors clopening. It still works. This is a well-maintained elevator. So, I've torn down my share of habitations. A court of law might call me malign, malign and vile, but in my heart my hands are as clean as a baby's bottom. Are you talking to anyone in particular, Blue Jack? Exercising my mouth muscles. Use it or lose it, Daisy. Use it and slash or lose it. I think a goose spooked Karen. Not unlikely. Some people just can't be doing with birds of any feather. What do you mean, gold prospectors? Answer! There are those that say, and they're right, that the beers they brewed here all went wrong. What was meant to be liquid and a little fuzzing fluid turned solid, solid gold. And where did all these skeletons come from? Oh, oh, that's never the real question. The question is, where did the meat go? I'm starting to think something very peculiar is happening in and around this very tall brewery. If it's really full of gold, won't it be incredibly heavy? With this many floors, I'd have thought incommensurability plus weight would make it sink into the earth, not propel itself. Pardon me if this is a stupid thing to say, but if this place makes gold instead of beer, is it really a brewery at all? And that's why Blue Jack has to destroy it. But if it's not falling under its own weight, what can an axe man hope to accomplish? So much and for so many. I have to destroy it and to redistribute wealth and property. I've brought down skyscrapers before. I know what it takes to eradicate a landmark. A few judicious whacks in the right-hand corner and down it goes. Everybody dies. That's how come they don't let me live in cities. Naturally, I gravitated to the biggest bullet in the West. And know what? I'm going to get my golden nuggets. Going to get them good. I've never heard anything less good in my life. How do you know which one's the right-hand corner? Hold out your hands. Hold them palms facing forwards like you're casting a spell. All right, and stick your thumbs out. From where I'm standing, this hand forms the letter L, and that's your right hand. No, but what if there are multiple entrances, like on some railway stations? Well, that's never been a problem for me, love. Look, Blue Jack... I can see you've been in the property destruction game a long time. An architecture, that's what I call it. But I'm starting to think this thing has sky hooks, or else it's somehow wedged onto the firmament itself. Well then, better chop it down before it cracks the firmamental dome over our heads and lets all the air out. I'm telling you, if that cloud falls down at terminal velocity, it could do someone's head in. I, for one, have a handful of theories about how and why, but not about what. Come on, Daisy. Elevator o'clock. Doors opening. My erstwhile husband, who I once crushed to licorice during vociferous hugging, once told me about a thing called a space elevator. Oh, a space elevator. And you think this is one? It would be the most energy efficient way to launch a thing into outer space, and it might explain why this elevator only keeps on going up. We need to pick a random numbered floor. Truly random. It's the only way to dodge that goose. You really don't like that goose. Have you ever been stung by wasps? Sure. How many times? 940. How old were you? 22. It was last week. Right. Floor 94022. The chance of the goose picking that among all others is next to zero. Daisy? Yep. You're having a hell of a year. Doors closing. Doors opening. More gold. More skeletons. Look out the window. Oh, mercy my me. The curvature of the earth. The stars are so clear. Can we be beyond the atmosphere? No, look, I think I can see the firmament up there. Don't try to open it. What's the top number the elevator went up to? Was there a number of digits? It's gone. The elevator is going down. I didn't hear its doors closing. Must have been when our ears popped. But mine didn't pop at all. Oh, there they go. This skeleton is holding something. A document. 
Richard Richardson, last will and testament on being consumed by a goose. The architect. I hoped the tower's progenitor might tell me if any large, licorice-looking, sticky insectoid elevator experts had attached themselves to the project. But now I'll never know. I think you already know. I know a lot of things. The tower isn't going to collapse at all. But if Blue Jack can't sever it from its roots, it might just tear the West wide open. That's bad for anyone on the ground. But does that mean the dozens of brigand families inside could survive? Doors opening. Only for as long as they could survive me. Your Goosinda, the pecker, the mauler, the heart haver, the steely-eyed severer of carotid arteries. You're the goose that lays the golden eggs. How right and wrong you are. I am Goosinda, the slasher, the maimer, the heart eater, the golden beaked severer of any and all arteries. And my eggs are of mucus and albumin, and they are coated in a thin patina of tin. Is your beak pure gold? It can't be. She'd blunt it. The one in brown has knowledge of metallurgy. You are right. It is gold-pressed steel, sharp as a needle, bright as an eye. You will find my dining habits quite surgical. Can I have a look? You, madam. I can see you edging your way to the elevator, and you'll find that quite regrettable. <laughs> Gold is very conductive, so... Geese are extremely robust. She'll be awake in a mo. Should we cut her head off? Never decapitate a goose. If you do, it releases a signal that summons more of their kind. But Goosinda might be a one of a kind. Give me a hand with this. It's a trapdoor to a coal cellar. Oof! Oof! Uh. Right, we have to destroy the lift shaft. What? But the firmament! And we're... Isn't it obvious? This is a space elevator, and the whole sprouting brewery doesn't fall because it's reached balance beyond Earth's gravitational pull. This thing is a space rocket! Twice as high as the firmament! If we can sever it at the ankle, it will rush off. If not, the tensions involved will destroy everything we ever knew. And this goose must not be allowed to escape. Take this, and I'll program the elevator. What are you talking about? The goose will be coming for us, heart and soul. This is my petticoat, but if you, if you turn it inside out... It's a parachute. Never leave home without one. I'll distract the goose and you scarper down the stairs. At a safe level, leap out the window and float down. What about you? And the goose? If I can, I'll destroy the goose in a blaze of glory. I came here looking for the truth and I found a fight. If not, at least I can take the legendary goose assassin, which is a goose assassin, so far away that the earth will no longer be threatened. What are you talking about? Let me remember... Uh, one nine three one one zero three one one zero zero. Karen, you're going to destroy the foundation. We'll fall to our death. Five two zero zero seven seven one one zero 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 two. Doors closing. Self destroy initiated. A space rocket's really real. It doesn't matter what I believe, Daisy. You'll see for yourself. But you have got to scarp up. And the firmament? I think it's primarily gaseous. You have awakened a hunger within me. Do either of you have any cheese? Cheese was the last thing I tried with my original beak. Human blood can sharpen the mind and draw a goose away from Kingdom Animalia. But cheese and butter satisfy. I have some cheese. I've got it here by the window. What are you doing? Find a way to save yourself. What sort of cheese? What sort of cheese? Some go well with human flesh and others... What was that? The liberation of the planet from you. No! You'll die for this. If I have to perish, I'm taking you with me. No! I can see, can see the firmament. You think you killed us both? The geese can fly. Not the ones with steel beaks and gold rings on their toes and a belly full of gunfighters. I have studied the aerodynamics of the goose. Curse you! Maybe if you can eject all that, and even your very beak, you'll make a living landing. But I have a parachute! No! The whole thing's just... just flying away. That's the opposite of what's meant to happen. Honestly, it's vulgar. Hey, Blue Jack. Where did you just drop in from? Karen went up with the rocket. She gave me the only parachute. Maybe I should have stayed behind. 
I hope she found the closure she was looking for. Well, it's absolute cack from my perspective. I barely swung the axe and everything bar the bottom two floors flew away. All's left is rubble and a sack or two of groats. I don't know why I bother. Well, so long. Oh, what a big old mess. Doors opening. I thought the lift was destroyed. Only floor three upwards. It's still functional at the top, and I have a code that takes it directly to zero, remember? A single use, I think. Did you find the licorices? Did you find the remains of your husband up at the top? What I found in the penthouse at the top of the brewery was a fully staffed rocket ship control, staffed by sundry possums, and with them a slew of trash, garbage, second-hand, third-hand foodstuffs. It was truly someone else's paradise. And licorices? I ate him. Ate all the licorices. Had to be sure, to be sure. Why? Because, with the state of his death in a legal limbo, because while he was only trash licorice, because I, I, I don't want it to be a crime for me to marry again. I had to join with him and destroy him. Now, if I marry, I'm not breaking the law. I thought you didn't want to get married. I don't, but I do want to break the law. I don't know which law, but I have a certainty, a calling, to break law and do crime. I don't want marriage to be it, any more than I want to have buying my groceries to be the crime I commit. I'm looking to do crime for crime's sake, and I don't want sheriffs to bust me just for workaday things like the ceremonial acknowledgement of everlasting love. Surely eating your husband was a crime. Oh, hadn't you heard? It's not a crime to eat your husband in the West, not if he isn't human. Oh, are you still here, are you, Blue Jack? I am, and look what I found flapping about. A beakless goose. Oh, mercy. And though I may cut down and destroy every edifice to human pride, and though I may break every neck in the book, I'll look after wounded fowl. I have a big heart, and it's beef for the beakless. Well, whatever you do with Gusinda, don't feed her human blood. Don't tell me what not to do. Well, now we know there's life beyond the firmament. Possums and semi-reformed brigands and two raccoons. Oh, every time you said possums since this whole thing started, I've been imagining raccoons. But now you said that, I know what you mean. Round, pointy, like big mice with attitude. Yes, here's a picture I drew of the space commander. Or I think she was the space commander. Yes, these are good animals. Can I keep this? And so are raccoons. Now I'm famished and thirsty. Darn. All this brewering and not a beer to show for it. Good thing for us, there are two breweries in Lemley Corn. The other one, I'm told, is a single story. And they cook amazing baked bean pie. That's one of the only things I like to eat. See? This will be a happy honeymoon. That is the end of the episode. Doors closing. <laughs> Thanks, Elevator. Cow pokes, cow folks, every kind of... Cow children. The Jilts starred Charlotte Creasy as Daisy and Josie Hypatia Grounds as Karen, with Tom King as Blue Jack and Marielle Evans as Gusinda. Cow kin, cow skin, whatever cow you be. Well, that was a whole actual episode of Cow Children. If you've been following through the episodes as they're released, you'll notice that there was a long gap between this episode and the one before. That's because the one before was really good. Um, not that a really good episode is always going to be followed by a gap. But, I don't know, that'd be a peculiar threat. I could give you a a list of excuses as long as my leg. Uh, But, since everything's done on computers these days, it depends what uh, what resolution your screen is as to how long leg equivalents would be. Um, I mean, even if you've specified its size 10-point font, different screens are going to show that differently, I assume. I don't know. I don't know what standardised it. Well, yeah, definitely, in fact. Because does the does the computer know what size your screen is? I guess you tell it what resolution you're currently running at, but it doesn't doesn't necessarily follow that it knows the maximum uh, the maximum resolution of the the monitor you've attached to it. I mean, now it can probably tell that with uh, science and and the the modern cables, HDMI systems, and stuff. But I don't know whether I can reasonably call anything that you might see only in digital form. Uh, a list as long as your leg, except on a purely metaphorical level, uh, which was actually the level I was aiming for in the first place. Good night.